All right, hello everyone. Welcome to our uh, approach to the shared task, uh, celebrity profiling using Twitter follower feeds for Pan at Clef 2020. Um, I'm Abigail Hodge and I'm gonna be presenting with Samantha Price. We are both from Northeastern University. Um, so just a general overview of what this task entails. Um, this task is a celebrity profiling task uh, based off of Twitter. So it is to predict the occupation, uh, gender and age, specifically the birth year, of celebrities on Twitter given tweets, not from the celebrities themselves, but from their Twitter followers. So the birth years are between uh, 1940 and 1999. Uh, the gender labels can be either male or female and the occupation labels include sports, performer, creator, and politics. So just some of the work that we drew from in this task. Uh, this task is actually very similar to the uh, celebrity profiling challenge from 2019. Um, however, that, that task had a few differences from 2020. It had a lar significantly larger training set um, and more categories, such as including a non-binary category for gender and quite a few more occupations. Um, and the profiling was based off of the celebrities themselves rather than the followers, which makes it seem on the surface a bit easier. Um, so, but we could draw a little bit from this. So the results, at least for that, suggested that classical machine learning is better than better for this kind of author profiling task than deep learning is. We also um, drew from just some general feature selection work. Um, specifically, we looked at Argaman and all. Uh, they investigated which features were most effective for anonymous authorship profiling, like what we're doing here. They had particular success with part of speech tags. We have also uh, had success with word embeddings and named entity recognition in the past when we have done similar anonymous authorship profiling um, for a project. So a little bit of our approach. So kind of our starting approach for this is that we decided to treat the followers tweets as though they were written by the person that we are trying to profile or to profile here. Our basic assumption is that people want to follow celebrities that are like them in some way, either in terms of their age or their gender, or that they uh, have interest in the things that the celebrities are doing. Someone who is really interested in politics and who tweets a lot about politics is probably more likely to follow a politician, for example. So in order to do this, we combined all the tweets for one celebrity into a single document and sort of pretended that a single person wrote all of these tweets. And that person is the person that we are trying to profile. Um, so what features did we get out of this? Um, so we got uh, the, one of the first things kind of based off that work from Argument, Argument in uh, 2009 is the POS tags. Um, that paper found that, for example, men tend to use uh, determiners and prepositions a lot more. Women um, tend to use pronouns a lot more. And that has been found to be a pretty significant thing in several machine learning um, profiling things since then. Um, word embeddings, we also did to sort of capture uh, semantics. Um, we just took the essential, uh, essentially the average uh, word vector for all of the words in the giant document. Uh, we also found stop word count, tweet length, uh, number of links, hashtags, mentions, emojis. Uh, as well as named entity types, which I'll get to on the next slide. We did not include n-grams just because uh, we had such large, um, we had a fairly limited number of documents, although they were each quite large, and as and we had a huge vocabulary. Um, so we weren't, we didn't really uh, think that n-grams would be particularly uh, effective for this type of task. Um, and just as a note, POS tags and named entity types were calculated after removing links, hashtags, mentions, and emojis from the text. So POS tags, stop words, word embeddings, all that, that was all done using the Spacey library for Python. Um, and one of the features that this library had that we really liked was the named entity recognition algorithms. So named entity types are things such as countries or um, works of art or years or people, things like that. We thought that this sort of thing would be really, really helpful for determining occupation. Um, for example, a politician might be more likely to tweet about countries a lot than a athlete would. And our occupation score is really, really high, uh, which you'll see in the results uh, section. 
which might indicate that the NER was successful, but it's kind of unclear if that NER is actually the cause because our algorithm was really slow. It took several hours to extract all the features. We think this might be because Spacey was having issues running on these huge documents that we made, or we just weren't using it effectively or something like that. But because either way, because it was running so slowly, we didn't really have time to do feature evaluation and pruning. So we can't say for certain certainty if that named entity recognition was the cause of our success. And I'm going to turn it over to Sam to talk about our models. Right, so after feature extraction, we had to select the models in which to predict the categories we were looking for. Um, so we decided to stick with classical machine learning models, including just a regression, random forest classifier, and a support vector machine. Based on each algorithm type that we chose, um, we our models were created with tuned hyperparameters using five-fold cross-validation. And there's a model created for birth year, gender, and occupation. Um, the logistic regression hyperparameters, random forest hyperparameters, and support vector machine hyperparameters are listed below. Um, basically using resources that we found through journals, we determined that we narrowed down three specific hyperparameters for each algorithm. Um, we could have experimented with more, but in due to time constraints and a focus on feature extraction, we decided to stick to three um, for each algorithm. So after training the models with hyperparameters, um, we decided to do metric evaluation using 20% of the training data that was set aside just for testing. Um, and the macro F1 score was considered the most significant metric by which we measure success. Ultimately, the trained models were also evaluated based on a C-rank score that was defined in the pan test description that was used both in this competition as well as last year's competition. So to briefly go over results, um, here you can see the logistic regression results for occupation. We have accuracy listed here, as well as a heat map um, with a darker color indicating a higher score for precision recall and F1 score. And on the right, there's a confusion matrix that shows the actual uh, category for each celebrity, as well as what was predicted by the classifier, um, and generally positive results seen here. We saw similarly consistent results with gender as well, um, with males more easily identifiable than females, um, and but still a strong F1 score overall. Birth year, um, unfortunately, we couldn't use the same heat maps just because with the yellow brick library that we used, um, the classes for birth year, there are too many of them to um, put into a graphic. Um, so we printed out the numbers here. Um, we used a custom F1 score that provided a bit of leniency since it was harder with so many classes to identify someone born directly in 1945, for example. Um, so not a, a great F1, F score, but birth year is probably the most complicated metric to determine, so. Here you can see random forest. Um, the occupation was not quite as good as logistic regression, but still solid. Gender as well was pretty good, um, not as good at, at predicting the female gender as opposed to males. And again, you can see birth here, birth year with another pretty small F score, um, but pretty consistent with logistic regression. The support factor machine is probably the most consistent with logistic regression, um, a bit better than random forest overall, as you can see with occupation. Again, similar to logistic regression with gender. And finally, with birth year, um, the F scores are also relatively similar. Um, so overall, with the final results, the final C ranks um, were pretty consistent with each other, but logistic regression came out on top. Um, you can see in the small chart with the final F1 scores as well. Um, and logistic, logistic regression overall did better in occupation and gender, but the models are pretty close to each other. Um, we decided that because logistic regression was the most consistent and produced the best F1 scores for occupation and gender, which were more predictable categories than birth year, that it would be the most appropriate choice for using on the test data set. Thus, we used the three trained log logistic models on the test data set for um, the following results, a C rank of 0 0.577, an occupation F1 score of 0 0.707, a gender F1 score of 0 0.681, and a birth year F1 score of 0 0.432. Um, so just some takeaways from this. Our uh, first one is that NER appears to be a solid candidate for classifying occupation. However, because of our time constraints and our inability to do feature evaluation, more research is needed to determine if this was actually the cause of our success. We found consistent um, results with the task from last year, uh, which said that classical ML techniques are really effective at this kind of profiling. Um, and our approach of treating the followers like the person we're trying to classify fared pretty well. Uh, it would be interesting to see if this technique can be used in other areas of forensic linguistics or author profiling. 
So thank you very much. And here are our references for this presentation. Thank you so much.